All right, y'all got real quiet. That's my cue to start. Y'all are tired of talking. Now it's my turn. Uh, welcome into service this morning. We're so glad you're joining us for service here at Salem UMC. Uh, whether you're here in person or you're joining us online, uh, we are just so thankful that you chose our church to worship with. And a special extra welcome to our Boy Scouts this morning. Uh, they are going to be doing some things in our service uh, presentation. They'll be doing the presentation of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. So we want to welcome you all uh, to our service this morning. We're so glad you've joined us uh, and a chance to highlight what you have been doing uh, in our community and through our church. So welcome in, y'all. Uh, to get started, we do have some announcements. The first one, we do have some visitors here, so just some info for you all. Uh, if you need to use the restroom, go through this door to your left, my right, kind of snake through the hallway, and you'll see it down, down all the way at the end. Uh, ladies is on the right, gentlemen's is straight ahead. Uh, there is a handicap accessible on the left as you head down that hallway. So keep your eyes peeled down that hallway if you need to use the restroom. We do have a nursery open. Uh, it is through this door or through the outside door and all the way down the hallway in the very back corner on that side. Uh, Miss Catherine is in there uh, ready to hang out and love on your kiddos if they need to. We love having kids in church. There is nothing that we love more than hearing the sound of kiddos uh, squealing, excited, laughing. Uh, even if they get fussy, we enjoy hearing that too because that's the sound of a church alive. So feel free to keep your kids in church if you want to. Uh, it's not going to bother us if they're running laps around the sanctuary. Uh, we'll all get a good chuckle out of it and love it. But uh, if, if they're getting a little too much, that we understand that as well. Miss Catherine is in there to hang out and love on them if you want to. Um, yes, and then I was given a clipboard by Miss Denise. We are doing a Lenten Bible study, scripture highlight, prayer, story time. Uh, that being said, there's an opportunity for you to sign up for a day and a scripture and a word, or sorry, yeah, the day and the scripture, and then you're going to choose kind of a story to share or a Bible study you might want to do or questions you might have about the scripture or anything like that, just to kind of give us a chance to connect with our faith as a church family. Um, easy to do. It can be a quick Facebook post. It can be a video if you want to do that. But uh, Brother Justin and Miss Denise have all that extra information if you need it. So there's the sign up sheet and then all also is all of the scriptures in case you want to read through them in service today, kind of get an idea about what you might want to do. Uh, you can do it as a family, you can do it as an individual, but uh, I'll pass this clipboard as soon as I get done with all the announcements. So I'll be looking for that as it comes to you and uh, spend some time praying about what God might want you to share for some of these scriptures. Uh, today after church, we are, I say we, the kids, the Salem kids and Miss Lori are having uh, an awesome kind of gathering in the fellowship hall where they're going to make Valentine's cards and they're going to get them delivered to some of the senior care facilities in our area. So just an awesome opportunity for some outreach through the kiddos uh, to make some cards, to share some love and to share the love of Christ uh, with some of the elderly in their care center. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, stick around right after church, noon to about two-ish is what I'm told. So anytime in there, come drop by the fellowship hall and uh, make some cards for the, for the senior in our area. Uh, we have our Wednesday night programming up and running. Uh, Wednesday night happens Wednesday this week and Wednesday every week until we decide to stop it. Um, but uh, we'll have adult Bible study in the fellowship hall. That starts at 630. Youth is in the youth house. That starts at 630. And then we have kids in the kids wing over here. And that starts at 630 as well. Uh, so I encourage you all to get involved in that Wednesday night activity and uh, really start really digging your roots deep in your faith. Uh, we do have a list of birthdays, no anniversaries this week, but we have some awesome birthdays from Miss Kimberly Rousey, Philip Yance, Aiden Pinalto, and Mike Green are all celebrating birthdays this week. So happy birthday, you all. Uh, I encourage you to write cards, text messages, Facebook posts, whatever you can to stay connected and to uh, celebrate their days with them. And then uh, Brother Justin wanted me to do something fun with you all. Now, he gave some candy to me that I'm not sure I want to hand out because it's Reese's Cups. So uh, I'm like, that is my number one favorite candy in the world. So if you get these right, I might give you a high five, but I'm keeping the Reese's Cups for me. Uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, so with it being Super Bowl Sunday, uh, Brother Justin thought some Super Bowl trivia might be in store. So if you know it, shout it out. If you know it and you're joining us in worship online, type it in the comments. Uh, and if you get it first in the comments, and uh, I don't know, Brother Justin might crazy drive by your house uh, and throw a couple on your, on your front door or something like that. But uh, type in the comments if you want to. If you're here, shout it out, and I'll try and figure out who said it first and get you uh, one of the mini Reese's Cups if I don't eat it before I get to you. Uh, all right, so the first question. Where was the first Super Bowl? What city was the first Super Bowl? Not Green Bay, not Chicago. Who said it? That was Miss Beth Sanchez. You got 
Ms. Beth Sanchez. Los Angeles is the correct answer. The first Super Bowl was in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. All right, question number two. With it being Black History Month, this seems fitting. Who was the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl? Name. Emmitt Smith. Not Emmitt Smith. No, I heard it was okay. Stan. It was Doug, Doug Williams. Williams. Doug Williams. There it is. Great job, Stan McPeak. All right. All right. All right. Third and final question. Third and final question. How many pizzas, it's a number, how many pizzas are consumed during the Super Bowl? Three billion. Not three billion. Did you say billion? More than 40. More than 54,000. More than a million. Four. More than a million and a half. More than... More than 10 million. That's close. 11 million. It's like the price is right. Yeah. So the boys got down here were guessing 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, 6 million. Uh, 12 and a half. 12 and a half is the uh, approximate number. So about 12 and a half million pizzas. Now, if you're going to have 12 and a half million pizzas at your house, I'll be there to help you out with those. So just let me know. I would love to uh, join you for a Super Bowl party. Gluten-free for you. Right? Gl yeah, gluten-free for me if you could. If not, I'll deal with the consequences because I love pizza. Um, all right. Are there any other announcements that need to get made at this time? Bye, just a reminder and reception. Yes, service, service this afternoon at 2 p.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary, right? Uh, for the celebration of life service for Miss Kathy DeWeird. If you're interested in making it again, that's uh, this afternoon at 2 here. Then a reception to follow Fellowship Hall. Uh, so if you're able this afternoon, you want to come out and celebrate Miss Kathy's life, we encourage you to do so. Uh, she was an amazing lady that loved this church and loved the people of this church more than anything else. Uh, my favorite memory is her fuzzy navel cakes um, at all the uh, potlucks we had. Those were amazing. So uh, if you want to join, 2 o'clock this afternoon here at the Sanctuary for Miss Kathy. Uh, any other announcements that need to get made? All right, if not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we come to you today just so full of joy and so full of thanksgiving for the day you have given us. Lord, it's an amazing thing to just wake up and breathe in a fresh breath and know that today is going to be a great day because you are going to be involved in it somewhere. Whether we see it or we don't, we know that you're at work in our lives. Lord, I pray this morning as we come into your house that you would still all of the commotion going on in our lives, that you would uh, just still all of the crazy thoughts we have going on about all the anxieties and worries that we have and just allow us to do one thing in this hour we have, and that is to focus solely on you because you are an amazing God and you're worthy of our praise. And so I pray that you would hear that praise this morning and it is pleasing to you. Lord, I ask that as you hear that, you send your Holy Spirit on this place to fill it up and to fill us up, each one of us, from bottom to top, until we cannot do anything to anyone else other than just show your love to those people around us. Lord, I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite uh, the Boy Scouts forward for our presentation of the colors. rise for the presentation of the colors. Scouts attention. Color guard advance. Salute by the numbers one. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. <coughs> Color guard post the colors. You may. You may be seated. <laughs> I 
Actually, we're going to ask you to stand back up and join us in song. We'll start with going to the floor. We found out. 
Amen and amen. All right, kiddos, it is y'all's time. Come on up front. Miss Jenna is going to be sharing with y'all this morning. Uh, she has a mystery bag, so who knows what's in there? Uh, hopefully not an animal that will run out, right? Oh, she has to go reset the bag then. Never. Now, come on, kiddos, y'all coming up front. Come join Miss Jenna for some children's time. It's not going to be near as cool as Brother Denman's really cool box that he had. Oh, wait. There's my notes. Y'all can't see my notes. All right. Hi, how are you? Let me see if I can get this open. Who likes to go blow bubbles? Olivia, do you like to blow bubbles? David, do you like to? Oh, that one popped in my face. Ugh. Well, you know, I'm learning here. So, I know that you two used to love bubbles. And I even know some adults that like it when you blow bubbles. Can y'all catch them? Oh. And it's... Isn't it kind of funny how something so incredibly simple can bring happiness to people and a smile? Like I was blowing bubbles for Dawson earlier in the day and I saw people smiling and laughing as he was trying to catch them. Isn't that kind of funny? Yeah? Okay. So there's just one problem, right? When, you, when, when we're blowing them, what happens when you catch them? They pop. Hmm. Let me see. Let's try. Y'all try to catch them. Olivia, can you catch one? David, you were catching them earlier. Can you catch them? What happened? Oh. One, it, it popped, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, so do you know that there's things that people chase to try to bring them happiness? Let me see what I have in my bag here. So one thing that people chase is what? Money. Woo, no, no, mm -mm. back up. So, yeah, he's a good chaser, isn't he? So they think that if they have just enough money, it'll make them what? Happy, right? If I just have enough money to go buy something. But then what happens when you when you spend your money and you don't have money anymore? Are you, I know you're a saver. But then you just want mom to spend her money. So, but after you spent your money, it's all gone. Are you still happy? Maybe for a minute, right? For a minute, but then you're kind of like, oh, well, that's gone. Other people look for happiness in food. Stop. All right? They chase food because they think that, man, if I could just eat that, I'd feel a whole lot better. I know Miss Jenna's guilty of that sometimes. But then I eat it, and guess what? You don't have it anymore. I, you don't have it anymore, and sometimes it makes you feel worse, right? You're like, oof, I shouldn't have ate that. Like that cupcake I ate last night. I want it. Then some people chase Ooh, video, games. video games, entertainment, right? They think, oh, if I can just go have fun doing all of this fun stuff, it's going to make me feel better, right? But does it? Maybe for a little bit, but then it kind of leaves, right? What about popularity? Barrett, I borrowed your basketball thing. What? Okay, that apparently has been ripped. So, but they, they chase popularity, right? They're going to do and say anything that they think will make people like them. But sometimes when they do that, do they feel good about themselves after they've done that? After they've been mean to somebody? Do they, do they feel good? I know sometimes I say something and then I feel like, oof, I shouldn't have said that. That doesn't make me feel good about myself, right? But here's the funny thing. Did y'all know that Jesus knew that we were going to look for stuff to make ourselves feel better? He did. He did. He actually said, but he actually said, let me turn to my next day to my page. Yep. So um, he actually said that we might be happier if we were poor, hungry, crying, and disliked others. Why, why would he say that? Do you have any answers? Money could corrupt us. Anybody else? Popularity can corrupt you. We've seen that with some leaders, right? Yep, they did anything they could do to make people like them. Okay, so when 
Yeah, food can make you fat and overweight. And God has said that our body is a what? A temple to him. Okay. So when we are poor, hungry, crying, and think that we have no friends, we can turn to who? God and Jesus. That's right. So they have and they give us everything that we need, don't they? Yep. So don't spend time chasing bubbles. So we need to look to our Heavenly Father because He is the source of our happiness. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember that we can never find happiness by seeking the things the world has to offer. True happiness can only be ours by chasing after Jesus. Amen. All right. So I have something for y'all to remember that by. I am not giving you any more money, child. Okay. All right. David, I got one for you, too. Can you pass that to David? Reagan, do you need some bubbles to remember that by? No? All right. Y'all have a great week. Bye, guys. Good morning, church family. Uh, my name is Mark Thomas. I am the Cub Master for Pack 82, which is your Cub Scout pack here at Salem. Uh, pack a, uh, Cub Scouts is a program for kindergarten through the fifth grade. Uh, our pack here has 20, as of yesterday, we have 26 scouts uh, that in various ages. Uh, we, we had a, yesterday we had a big crossover ceremony into Boy Scouts where we honor our are fifth graders that have completed Cub Scouts and they cross over into the Boy Scouts and we had a really big day. We had 14 Scouts that, that went from Cub Scouts to Boy Scouts last night. So that was a really big accomplishment for these boys and we were really proud of them. Um, what's really great about that little group of people is that that group had 11 Scouts that started at first grade and three Scouts that started at second grade. So that group of 14 have been with each other through the, almost the entire, pro, most of them have been through the entire, their entire grade, year, grade school years, you know, the elementary school years. So, so one thing that we really pride ourselves in with, with Cub Scouts is growing friendships. And that, that little group had a lot of friends. They grew a lot of friendships together in those years. And that's a really exciting time for them. I'm really excited to see them go into Boy Scouts and and continue to grow those friendships with this, uh, these groups of boys, these boys here. Um, <clears throat> so for, for some of the highlights from our year this past year with the Cub Scouts, we had, we start, we start the year off in, with the, our, we follow the school year. So we start the year off in September and we kind of wrap up in May and we do a few activities in the summer. So to start the year off, we had a big uh, arcade party at the Vortex Arcade in North Little Rock. We had a camp out in Lake De Grey in the fall. We had uh, a big award ceremony here at the fire the fireplace pavilion out, out back behind the church. It's a wonderful facility. Uh, we had a Christmas party up at Bishop Park. Last month we had our big Pinewood Derby where they build the little bitty cars and race them down the track. And then yesterday we had our blue and gold ceremony where we honored all of our scouts that advanced in rank and, and we crossed over our Weebelos that, that went to Boy Scouts. Uh, coming up, we've got our Cubmobile race, which is like a big soapbox derby. These boys will build these big cars, and we'll get out in the parking lot of the church, and we'll run them down a ramp, and they'll race each other. They'll get the helmets on and crash, and there's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> so usually we have a couple, a couple pit stops where we have to repair cars because they've done run into each other. But um, we're going to have a spring camp out, and we'll, we'll wrap up the year with our rocket launching party. So we'll... we'll We'll get out there, build rockets, and shoot them off into the air. So we have a lot of fun there. But I just want to take this time just to thank uh, Salem United Methodist Church for, for hosting us every, every Tuesday night and, and being our sponsor. And, and it's a wonderful facility, and, and we're very grateful that you guys let us use it every week. So thank you, church. Good morning, Salem Methodist Church. My name is John Douglas, and I'm the Scoutmaster for Troop 99. 
Before we start, I'd like to invite our senior patrol leader, Jonathan Thomas, to come up and lead us in the Scout Oath and Law. Uh, please rise. Scout sign. On my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. Thank you, Jonathan. As you can see, this is how we start off every troop meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we do the Scout Oath and Law, and then we will end in a prayer. And this troop has a strong tradition of teaching these young men these principles throughout their time in scouting. We began this troop here in 1973, so this is our 49th year to be a part of Salem United Methodist Church, which consequently, as of this morning, we have 49 scouts with the addition of our 14 new guys, so 49 and 49. So next year will be our 50th year here. And I just want y'all to know how much we appreciate y'all providing us this facility to train these young men for the things that they're gonna do in this world. And as you can see, when they cite these 12 points of the Scout Law, this is what we teach these guys through their seven year time in Troop 99. And when they leave here, they are prepared to be leaders in our community and this world. And I want y'all to know how much of a part that y'all have in this by providing us with this location. We meet here every Monday night and we have um, continued to meet at seven o'clock on Mondays to train. And this is where we leave for all of our events. We do 12 campouts a year. And this can be anything from a weekend backpacking trip to canoeing on the Buffalo River for a week. Uh, last summer we were in New Mexico and hiked 80 miles for about 10 days straight, which was a great experience for these guys. So the things that we do, they're built around improving your, um, their citizenship, their personal duties to themselves and to their country and to God. And so our curriculum is based on all of these good principles that they've cited in the Scout Oath and Law. And I just want you to know that that is being reinforced on a weekly basis here with these guys. So there are some things that you can see around us that these guys have done. You see some service projects uh, out front. There's gonna be the blessing box and the park bench and the library. But these guys logged over 600 hours last year of community service and conservation, which is an awesome testament to their willingness to serve. Um, so I just want to say thank you for what you do for us. We know that you give up your facility to us every Monday night and you're not able to use it because we're here. But I just want you to know that we're trying to use the resources that we've been given wisely and I also want you to know how proud that we are of these young men and how they live their lives as a testament to the troop history here and it's a testament to Salem United Methodist Church. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to have this troop here. Uh, thank you to our scout master and our cub master uh, for those kind words to our church. And I know that uh, as a church body, uh, we're very honored to have you all here at our facilities. We're uh, very thankful for the service projects you've uh, accomplished around our facilities to beautify our campus, uh, to add outreaching ministries for us. Uh, so we're very thankful for those. And, and also, uh, I'm excited to know uh, over 600 hours of community service logged, which means anytime you're out in the community with your uniforms on and someone says, hey, where y'all, you know, where, who are you with? They'll say Troop 99. And then what do y'all 
y'all meet, Salem UMC. So our name is getting out there as well every time y'all are doing something in the community. So thank you for that. Uh, we are excited as a church to continue uh, in the future uh, to, to sponsor you all and to help charter your organization and to see what amazing young men y'all are going to turn out in your program. So thank you very much uh, for your service to our community. Uh, so let's do this. Let's give uh, all of our Boy Scouts one more round of applause for the stuff that they're doing. I feel like with over 600 hours of community service, that was a well-earned round of applause right there, guys. So thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. When they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area, surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear, to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those troubled by the devil. Uh, the spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because the healing power went out from him and he healed everyone. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor for the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses you who are hungry now for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy, yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets the same way. What sorrow awaits you who are rich, for you have, you have your only happiness now? What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger awaits you? What sorrow awaits you who laugh now, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow? What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I want to say a word of thanks to, to our scouts and their families uh, for, for being here this morning, those of you who uh, are able uh, to be here and, and to, to worship with us today. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege uh, for me to serve as a pastor of the church and to, to have a relationship uh, with our PAC and, and our troop. Uh, I also want to say thank you to uh, both to our PAC and our troop uh, for, for all the things that you do uh, in our community. Uh, in, in the life uh, and through the life uh, of our church and, and our schools with, with the raising up uh, of young people. Uh, I used to say, you know, the raising up of tomorrow's leaders, but I feel like the last few years I have recognized how much we're talking about the raising of, of today's leaders. Amen? Uh, not just leaders tomorrow, uh, as if a person somehow uh, uh, turns on a light switch to be a leader when they're 20 or 30 years old, but, but to be a later, leader today. Um, from, from those that are, that are uh, nearing the, the top of the mountain and the climb, as we talk about in scouting, uh, with Eagle Scouts, but, but all the way through the ranks uh, to those who, uh, in the little guys in the blue shirts who, who are just beginning. Uh, we, we are grateful for you. Uh, I want to say a word to our leaders, too, to, to Mark Thomas and, uh, and to Mr. Douglas, uh, to, really to all, to, to Mr. Carp, to Mr. McAllister, I, I think as well about Mr. McFarland, but, but to all uh, of our leaders um, for the giving of your time uh, and your talent, of your sweat uh, and encouragement uh, to, to our boys uh, in the time in which they become men. Amen? Uh, I want to just truly ask you to, to give thanks for our leaders. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, our, our adults, if you will, to stand, our adult leaders and, and parents and family, if you will. Would you stand, our scout families, the our adults? We, we, we truly are, are thankful for you, uh, for you, uh, for, for what you do uh, in, in making a priority uh, of the values that, that scouting uh, lifts up in, in the lives of young people of the kind of, of courage and honor uh, that is taught to young people who are leaders uh, not just in their pack and in their troop, uh, but leaders in their classroom, in the activities, uh, extracurricular things they do, but importantly, leaders in life. 
uh, leaders, uh, when, when that next step comes in college and career and military, wh- whatever it may be, we're grateful for the, for the leadership that, that is instilled uh, in your homes. Um, at, at times under the roof of our church and our arbor, uh, at times under uh, the top of a tent, uh, but the leadership that, that is taught and is lived. The passage that, that was shared this morning by, by Brother Russell uh, in Luke's Gospel, we, we hear Jesus uh, gathering the crowds there at a, at a great plain uh, over the sea. Uh, you'll note that, that Jesus, uh, in his life as a young adult, baptized at, at 30 years old, um, whisked away into the wilderness uh, to be tempted by the devil, that, that Jesus, in, in just three years, um, performed uh, every miracle that the Bible records for us. Uh, first at the wedding of Cana in Galilee, as we talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, preached his, his first sermons in, in Capernaum. Uh, he began to, uh, to fellowship, uh, to grow relationship, and, and to seek to transform lives. Uh, that's the, the mission statement of our church. Fellowship, relationship, and, and transformation. That, that our vision as a community uh, here is to be a strong fellowship that shares an enduring relationship with Jesus Christ to transform lives, communities, and, and, and the world. Jesus, in, in just three years, fellas, think about this. It's, it's less time than you have to make it, uh, it, it seems, from, um, from, from we below to Eagle Scout. Uh, that's just a minute. It, it may seem like an eternity when you're 13, but ask some of these guys with a full beard. Uh, three years goes by in a flash. That in just three years, and primarily uh, in an area of 10 square miles, uh, though we know that Jesus traveled from the lake country and the hill country where, where he lived and served to, to Jerusalem uh, and to Jericho, but generally, that, that all of his life and teachings and travels and relationships took place in an area of 10 square miles. He likely never uh, traveled as far as some of you did uh, in your hike in Philmont in a week, in, in a lifetime. And so that may not seem like very much. I want to read for you too just the few verses before uh, where Mr. Russell began. The night before uh, Jesus comes down from this mountain, that that Jesus had gone up to the mountain uh, to to pray in his mountaintop moment. The Bible says that he prayed uh, to God throughout the night. And then at verse 13, at daybreak, he called together from the disciples and he chose from among them Twelve, and here are their names. Simon, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Simon, Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot. And then he, uh, he went to the, to the plain to, to proclaim this message, to turn the world uh, upside down. Jesus went about in these few square miles with these few faithful followers who were willing uh, to make the climb up the hills and through the highways and byways, from house to house and from situation and circumstance, one to the next, from, from the crowds to the lonely moments. And he spoke uh, of a life of faith, of the salvation uh, of the whole world by grace through, through faith. It's an awesome thing to think that God sent his son to save the world, that that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but but have eternal life. It's an awesome message that Jesus has come to proclaim, to live and die and and rise again for the sins of the world. It's an awesome calling uh, to receive uh, Christ as our Savior and his calling upon our lives uh, as a disciple and and to seek to live uh, by faith. The Bible tells us that the, that the righteous live by faith, and, and we know that. It isn't, however, probably always easy to do. We're clear in this moment as the Scripture describes Jesus' uh, teaching of, of these things that are so counter to so much of what the world uh, had to say and, and really still does. Jesus seems to, to take so many of the ideas of the world and, and to turn them upside down saying, in, in fact, that the last will be. He speaks of the, of the great strength and power of a simple seed, of a, of a pinch of yeast. He talks about uh, the lost and, and, and the found, and the least and the forgotten, and the few, and the power of God at, 
at work in them all. When you think maybe about the journey, uh, some of you scouts, that it might take uh, to be an eagle, about the project that you might uh, undertake, it, it may be overwhelming. Some of our other young people in the room this morning too, the, the things that you're facing maybe at home or at work or at school uh, perhaps even seem overwhelming. As many of us even live in the world today and in the midst of, of inflation and, and confusion about where things are all going, it can be easy simply perhaps even to, to feel a sense of desperation. Like Jesus talked about in the passage, to feel a sense of, of poverty or brokenness or, or a lack of resources. But make no mistake, you are built for this. And I want to say that again. You are, are built for this. The Bible tells you that, that you are God's creation, His workmanship. That, that Christ, in fact, has created you for these works to do just this. That, that you are built for this. The truth is that, that you are stronger than you probably realize that you are. Now, I wasn't there on the mountaintop at Philmont. I wasn't there through all the blisters. I wouldn't know in the blister count, you know, who got the most that week or whose socks were the funkiest when it was all over. But you are built for this. The, the, the moments uh, that, that we face, the circumstances that we encounter, all of us, the truth is that God has built you just for this moment, for this time, and for this season. Not someone else, not somewhere else, but you. You. After all, this is our country and community which God has seen fit to give us. Amen? And, and this is uh, our opportunity to continue to, to build and teach, to, to preach and live and, and seek the faith of, of God in the, in the community where we live and, and grow. You may say, well, well, okay, I get it that, that, that God has, has prepared me and created me for this moment and this challenge. Just, you're, you're saying that, that God's called me just as he did James and John and Simon and Andrew. Yes, that's true. And yet you may say, but, but I just don't know if I, if I do have the strength uh, to, to do all that, that that has to be done. I don't know if there's enough hours before tomorrow, preacher, to get the laundry all done and pay the bills and, and do all the other things I need to do to, to take care maybe uh, of a loved one as a caregiver. Uh, the, the truth is, though, that, that you do have the strength. That, that, the, that the calling uh, is not about perfection in, in what you do, but simply about the power of God at work in you and, and through you. That the Bible says, in fact, in, in Proverbs, uh, that the desires of the diligent will be satisfied. Now, now, I know those are words, maybe diligent might be a word we don't use every day, but the, but the teaching, no less, is, is not lost. That, that we get things done by being committed to the work, right? I mean, the, 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 the truth of the matter is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And I know soon we need to be going out the door. Somebody's probably got to be making those wings and, you know, starting the cheese dip and all that sort of thing. There won't be any cheese dip if somebody doesn't, you know, start cutting up the, the Velveeta. Uh -huh. But lastly, I simply would want to say, uh, say this, uh, on Scout Sunday uh, especially, uh, is to put your heart into it. To put your heart into it. Um, not, not just uh, our scouts and the, and the things that they do, but, but just a reminder to us all to, to lean in. Uh, to, to lean in uh, to the opportunities that God ha has given to us each and all to, to give our very best uh, and, and to leave the rest in, in God's hands. The, the, there are moments when we say, well, but this is all that, that I have uh, to give. Uh, you know, I don't have this or that. I, I don't have this kind of money. I don't have uh, this kind of skill or that. But the truth is, you, you have and you are uh, all that is needed. That, that you are stronger than you think you are. That God loves you more maybe than, than you even realize. That you're more capable maybe than you know uh, that you are. 
some of these guys in this room probably could testify that, 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 that maybe, I mean, uh, that maybe it, it turned out that, that by the time they, they made it to the end uh, uh, of their hike, that they had it all the way. Amen? I want to invite uh, Mr. Carp to put him on the spot, but to invite our chaplain uh, from the troop to come, uh, if he's willing. I hope. Oh, I saw him get up. That means he might be willing. Uh, and to, to close us in prayer, but I do want to say again and again, I, I am thankful for our pack and our troop. I am so thankful for the legacy of so many fine people. I mean, immediately Mr. McFarlane comes to mind, but I am so thankful uh, for, for our troop and our pack and for the leadership uh, that takes place, not just here, uh, but everywhere. Uh, I, I am grateful for, for you all. Uh, Mr. Carp, I also want to give thanks for you, sir, and, and for the word you will speak over us. Thank you, Pastor. And this is a little impromptu. Um, I was not, uh, not prepared to I say... Warned, but not really. He kind of did. He gave me a little bit. Um, and since I'm up here and I have the mic, um, I would like to say something... Um, I do feel very blessed to have uh, have moved from uh, where we did to uh, to Bryant, Arkansas, and found this troop when my oldest son, who is now 24 years old, uh, and has given us our first ch grandchild, he earned his eagle. Well, I don't know when he was, you know, 17 years old. Uh, my second son, uh, Jacob, or Aunt Patrick, earned his eagle. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I call them number one, two, and three. I get their names wrong. Uh, he earned his eagle uh, uh, about, about three or four years ago, and he's a, he's a junior at Arkansas Tech. Uh, my third son, is it Jacob? Stand up, sir. Yeah, Jacob. Uh, he, he, earned, he, earned, he earned his eagle uh, here, uh, here just a few months ago. And then uh, Andrew, who is uh, part of the flag ceremony here. So I've been very blessed um, to have had all four of my boys go through it. Um, and I, I can't say enough for the for the church allowing us to meet here. Um, and 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 I also would like for those boys that have got projects that were done on this campus. I think uh, Ryan Metcalf, if you'll stand up. Um, Ryan did the uh, um, did the bench that's around the yes. tree tree out here. All right. Um, my son Jacob did the. Uh, um, the community board. All right, I was there for that. That's right. All right. Uh, Nick Burrell. Nick did the uh, the food. Uh, blessing the, box. the blessing box. Yes. All right. So, who else am I missing that's here? Oh, Will. Sorry, Will Felton. Sorry about that. Uh, Will Will put together. He built the uh, the library uh, box out there. So. so so those are things that, uh, that as a troop, um, we, we wanted to do um, as projects, and these guys decided to do on your campus to, uh, to help your, your, uh, your church and your ministry here. So, all right, Pastor, I guess we'll end in prayer. Uh, Lord, thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for the blessings uh, of the people that you put in our way. Thank you for um, giving us the wisdom to use the gifts that you've given us to the betterment of your, um, your community, your church, uh, and, and the world as a whole. We thank you, Lord, for the leadership in the church, uh, the leadership in the PAC, the leadership uh, in the troop, um, that we may raise good young men, good young ladies, good people um, to, um, to the betterment of, of the society in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand and join us in our final song, You Are My All in All.
Amen and amen. Thank you all again for joining our service this morning. Uh, I want to encourage you all as you get ready to leave this place that uh, there's no coincidence that Jesus was a carpenter always working with his hands and working with things to make them built better for what their intended purpose was, was it a table or a bench or any, a stool, anything like that. Uh, so if you feel like you are built to do what you're supposed to do, but maybe you find yourself still under construction, I want to encourage you all to reach out to either Brother Justin, the church, myself, uh, just let us know that you're needing some help with something. We'd be happy to talk with you about it, to pray with you about it, uh, to kind of walk with you through whatever you're going through as you are being constructed to be built to do what you need to do. So I pray that you go in his name and you remember that you can tackle anything that he sets in front of you as long as you do it with him. In Jesus' name, amen.